News Talk Radio, 610 WIOD presents the Neil Rogers Show. To get in touch and talk with Neil, dial 751 WIOD from day. In Broward, it's 524 WIOD. Outside the 305 area code, toll free 1 800 944 WIOD. And Bell South Mobility customers make a free call by dialing Star IOD. The opinions expressed by the guests, hosts, or callers are not necessarily those of this station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio, 610 WIOD. You'll be in the ratings, you're better than I am. Even the competition agrees. The Neil Rogers Show on WZTA, Miami Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and the Palm Beaches is the best morning show in South Florida. <laughs> Anybody who gets a nice here on an AM station is a hero in my book. You're like St. Thomas Aquinas. You've got no problem with me. Even the other morning shows Listen to the Neil Rogers Show on Theta 4. I hope you beat me in the rings. You're better than I am. <laughs> well, what can we say about that? I am that hemorrhoid. 1206 at WYOD. And you remember the time I saw Joey and Winn-Dixie that night and I came on the air? That's like a couple of months ago and I mentioned it and I'm sure it was him. I'm positive. And we got all these different um, wildly uh, conflicting stories about Joey. Does anybody care? A sunrise. Well, now that I guess Paulie's gone and, well, George is out of his mind, I guess I guess Bill Clinton is the only one with a little foreskin. <laughs> hey, Neil, how you doing? I'm out here in beautiful sunrise today. Just Who the hell is this? Time. Who is this? This is Mr. Announcer. Oh, well, isn't that wonderful? I'm an announcer just like you, Neil. Well, that's great. What station do you work at, Exxon? No, I don't work at any station. I'm I'm self-employed, and I just sit in a little padded room and talk like this all day. Well, that means you're like out of work on the beach. Good. Neil, Join the club. Let, let me tell you something. Go ahead. I am a virgin. I mean, a virgin caller with your fabulous show. And I would, just, I would just like to tell you about this tremendous, I mean, absolutely, can you believe I talk like this? Yes. Absolutely ridiculous pork meeting that I saw today as I was driving off the Seahorse Expressway. I'm talking about the sawgrass, of course, Neil. Don't I really sound official? Anyway, I was going off the sawgrass <laughs> expressway. Hang on a minute, Neil. Hold your footstuff or whatever Is this it is. Bush Bing Bang in drag or what? Well, I'm something. God. Anyway, I'm coming off the Seahorse Expressway at sunrise. You're coming off of something, all right. I think it's a three-day drunk. Well, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I haven't had a drink in years. Right. Anyway, I'm coming off the Seahorse Expressway, looking off to my left, and what do I see? But there must have been more pigs than in a pig pen. Neil, I didn't have to drive through there. I had to wallow through there. And guess what, Neil? I heard the reason that they're pulling people over is to see if they have, like, cigarette lighters that are hot, and they're going to give you a ticket. Right. What is the meaning of this, Neil? They have the hot meter and if your thing is too hot, man, you're, uh, you're history. I'll tell you, you're these, dead guys, meat. these guys, these guys, there, there must have been, there must have been at least a dozen. Who is this? This is Mr. Announcer. No, seriously, who is who is this? We've got to know who this is. <laughs> who is this? I wouldn't repeat my name on the on the air, <laughs> even if I had your paycheck, Neil. Yeah, I bet you would. About twenty times you'd repeat it. Then you'd only wouldn't have to repeat it again. Well, you know, Neil, <laughs> it's it's like this. <laughs> who is this? <laughs> I'll call you again sometime. Neil. Okay, nice talking to you, and Mr. We'll announcer. This fabulous relationship. It's just Mr. Announcer up in beautiful sunrise. Goodbye. Have a nice life, Neil. Who was that? I know who that is. You know what I'm saying? It's like Jerry Markbright. I know who it is, but I can't put my finger on it, probably. Who was that? Sounded like a cross between Gary Owens and Rush Limbaugh. Ten minutes, Pat. You know who it is? like Mr. Microphone. Mr. <laughs> yeah! It's Mr. Microphone! Oh, that was, uh, what's his name? That was, uh, what you call it? Ron Hershey Highway, wasn't it? No, he don't sound like that. It's Mr. Microphone. Oh, so Sonny's too embarrassed to call in now because he's made a fool of himself. He keeps sticking that banana in his mouth in public. And uh, has been banned in most of South Florida as a result. So now he's got Mr. Microphone calling in. That did sound like him. How come he's so good on this show and those things he does on there are so lame? God! 
This is Mr. Microphone, and it's the Sonny Fox Show with Ron Hersey and Sonny Fox. Oh, God. Give me a break, Sonny. That was Mr. Microphone. Well, he's probably searching for an audience. Sooner or later, they all land over here, man. They know where the audience is, and it sure ain't over there. Consumer Credit Law Center, speak of the devil. <laughs> if you're one of the thousands of radio deadbeats out there, brother, sister, then you need the Consumer Credit Law Center. They can remove those derogatory, disgusting, revolting, bad things from your credit report. And everybody deserves a second chance, even people in this business, except uh, you know who next door at the coast, who's probably had more chances than they ever already can. It takes about 90 to 120 days to correct, and they're going to eliminate those things from your credit bureau files. In fact, they guarantee it. That's right. It's 100% guaranteed their service to clear your records, or you get your money back. 400 bucks for a single, $500 for a couple, and you can even finance their fee. How the hell do you like that? If you've had bankruptcies, bad debts, late credit card payments, foreclosures, IRS liens, chapter 7, chapter 11, chapter 182, whatever it is, instead of letting those sit around and ruining your credit by being on there for seven years, have them wiped away with the Consumer Credit Law Center and get a fresh start. Call them today, 832-0130. Tell them Mr. Microphone told you to call, 832-0130. Have you taken a good look in your closet lately? Anything in the... You got me all screwed up here, George. I was going to put this thing in the phone. I've been talking to our celebrity uh, voice there. I've been suffering with the swelling and the itching and all of the pain that goes along with it for several months now. And I've tried everything from sits baths to suppositories and nothing has worked. And amazingly enough, the only thing that has worked has been Neil Rogers. Just by listening to one show, all the, all the itching has stopped, the pain has gone away, and... The swelling is really dissipated, and it's all because of Neil Rogers. Yeah. 1214, we have an open line in Broward where Mr. Uh, Douchebag was on. And somebody just dropped off in date. I can't get over that. Look at that. Now I feel really depressed. We were doing so well, you know. We started out a little slow, a little laid back this morning, and then they all got lit up like somebody gi- uh, like little gigantic hemorrhoid under their butt. 751 WIOD in Dade and 524 in Broward. Cutler Ridge. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, I had to follow Mr. Microphone. He was, That wasn't Mr. Microphone. That was his brother-in-law. Uh, well, this is the Cutler Ridge Chronic, and at least I have Calling a from phone. death row. What is it? Cutler Ridge Chronic. Yeah. I have a good telephone, so at least I got... Well, you could fool the hell out of me, sir. You sound like you're calling from, like, Roseanne Barr's butt. Oh, okay. He was talking about gangsters with badges. Yeah. Okay? It's... There you go. Go ahead. Okay. You know, uh, the, the, the frog lover call got me set off. I've been set off anyway, but... But you hit it right on the head. You know, what was wrong with him, and that every ass kisser like, like him, is that they cater to the policies of Reagan and Bush and all their fascist cronies. Yep. I, I mean, I mean, if, you know, back in the 60s, I don't want to be old-fashioned, but you were either part of the problem or part of the solution. <laughs> and, uh, and every political group, they need their thugs, their soldiers, and, and good, uh, good music there. Yeah. And here we have uh, state and local pigs. IRS and EA thugs. Yep. You know, and uh, not to get too personal, but I have a I have a case in federal court. But I had uh, quite a bit of money stolen from uh, from me by the federal government. Henry Barrow's got a case in federal court. Yep. Seagrams. <laughs> and uh, and this is serious. And like I said, I can't get into it in the detail. But there were no drugs involved. Nothing yep. illegal. They right. stole money. It was cash money. I stole some property. And this is being, and the cash is being transported. We have receipt for it and everything else. It's been in federal court for a year and a half, and I still don't have my money and no evidence. Yeah. Unbelievable. I'll be damned. Well, good luck to you, sir. Okay. Hang in there. And keep on fighting for it, Neil. Okay. Go in the backyard and yank that weed out of the ground right now, pal. Or you're dead meat. 1216 at WIOD. <laughs> Boy, Mr. Microphone Jr. just kind of like set me off there. I wasn't expecting that, you know, and I'm not, I'm still like about uh, only 20% recovered from this crud. It's my Malaluka thing again. If she ever call, if anybody calls me and starts hocking a China with that Malaluka crap, man, I'm just going to jump right through the microphone, Mr. Jupiter. 
Hello, Neil. Hello. How are you? This Happy time? Purim to you, sir. Okay. I'm a Graham, so I don't know what that I bet means. they're having a lot of big Purim parties up there in Jupiter right now, or probably right next door, like right on the edge of Uranus. Right out in the farms there. Yeah. Yeah. All the Yidlach on the farm, man, are really doing it. <laughs> they're right on. Yes, sir. Listen, you, did you get your cable hooked up? Uh, it was finally hooked up. Finally called you or whatever? They did finally call me, I will say that, last uh, Friday, I believe. I haven't called them back. I figure if it took them six weeks to call me, really? I'll wait about five or six and then give them a friendly hey, call. Hey, they'll be billing you tomorrow, don't worry. No, they already are billing me for my old address, so I'm not, like, stealing anything. I have the exact same service. They just don't know that I've got it, and they don't even know that I've moved because, evidently, uh, they got lost in the translation because they're too busy uh, sending out bills. Yeah, really. Well, I saw something on TV. Uh, they said they'd hook it up right away. 1-800-CABLE-ME. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd give you a call. Tell them, tell them to call 1-800-CABLE-THIS. Yeah, cable. Well, that's too many letters. Well, that's okay. It'll still get the message across. <laughs> um, that referee is Jerry Markwart. Not no, no, Mark. wrong. Mark Bright. I will bet you every dime that I have in my paycheck against 50 cents, well, his name is Mark Bright. Well, your uh, famous news guy there said uh, Markham. So you're saying Mark Bright now, and it's Mark Quart. Wrong. Nope. Jerry Mark Bright. I've been watching the National Football League, sir, for 36 <laughs> years. His name is Jerry Mark Bright. I can see his ugly face in front of me right now, and I can see him emphatically punching out those arms. Time out. TV time out. Right now. Trust me. And his microphone's not working. Right. Well, we that's always true. Right. Especially for that uh, but I'm Jerry, Jerry about Siemens, that who's like 700 too. years old and weighs 14 pounds. It what really is it? irritates me they've taken away the... Replay it's a bunch of crap. We finally get something good so that at least once in a while we can get a call that's right. Not too often, but at least Wait till once. Wait they, they have a big game and we got one of those calls again. I'm and telling everyone. you, I'm taking my helmet Zacharias out to JRS and my artillery and my tank. Sammy and, uh, will be fumbling and, yeah. Yep. Bad. Um, Peter Krenzer's a douchebag. Okay. He's going back to Rochester this week. Really? And he's going to eat white hots until his blood pressure goes through the roof. That'll do it, man. Just about two days of Don and Bob's and Vic and Irv's, and that'll do it. He'll be dead meat. Yeah, he's... Well, have a great day, sir, and give a big kiss on the lilacs. I don't kiss him. See oh. you later. Okay. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Make a note of that, George. We have an open line out of town. I mean, he's calling from Jupiter. He don't want to spoil his image up there. He got a lot of kin listening right now, a lot of kin folk and farm folk, and they don't like that uh, kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Them folk. Uh, what are we doing now? Oh, we're doing Toyota Hollywood. We like them folk, man, because they're great folk over there at Toyota Hollywood, calling all Toyota buyers potential or thinking about it because it's a Toyota buyer's alert at Toyota of Hollywood. Don't even think about buying a new Toyota until you check with the bald old Irish Patrick Murray. Happy St. Paddy's Day and happy Purim, Patrick. Right now at your participating Napa Auto Parts store, buy three Napa shocks or struts in any combination and get one free. Save on Autolite non-resistor spark plugs. Now just 64 cents each after rebate. Plus Belden high-performance spark plug wire sets as low as $1.99 after rebate. Save now at your participating Napa Auto Parts store. Hurry, sale ends April 12th. Yeah. Fabrich said that uh, the bird's a liar. The, the bird's a liar. She always wears foreign stockings, torpedo bras, like a lingerie department in a Kmart store. A useless bag like Shasha 
like a boy. You're just another fifty dollar hobo. Yeah. Twelve twenty-four. At WIOD, as we continue doing our thing for you every day, 932, right here in Yahoo City. So what's the story? Are Rick and Seth doing that thing tomorrow? We still don't know. <laughs> oh, God, is that embarrassing. Are we doing that thing? Do you know, Tim, from the uh, stadium tomorrow? We are doing it. Do they know about it? Oh. <laughs> well, at least somebody knows about it. That's a good start. Rick and Suds live from Joe Robbie Stadium tomorrow. we got a big weekend exhibition baseball at the stadium. And we are sucking around heavy duty to try to get those Marlin games, man. Here's a lady in Boca. A lady in Boca is gone? No, she's here. Oh, geez, don't do that. God, I almost Sorry. like flew off the chair. <laughs> um, I'm a first-time caller and a first-time listener. And my no, friend... it's a first-time I... listener? Yes, I am. Where have you been all my life? I don't know. I'm just here in Boca. Probably hanging out with Mr. Microphone in Sunrise. Exactly. Um, but I've been, my friend's been telling me, and I want to hear Clint Eastwood as the beaver. Really? Yes. In other words, you want to see a little beaver intensive for you today, huh? Exactly. Well, uh, you know, it's kind of a little tacky to call on a show that you never heard before the very first day and make a request and stuff like that. But since you sound so charming, and how long have you been listening this morning or this afternoon or today or whatever? About three hours. Three hours? And what's the verdict? You better say something really nice and suck around, then I might play the stuff. I think this is incredible. I love it. Great. And the show, too, right? Yeah. Okay, well, go back to your radio and whip that baby up, okay? Okay, thanks. Have a great day. And by the way, happy Purim. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. It's the all-new Leave it to Beaver, starring Barbara Billingsley, Hugh Beaumont, Tony Dahl, and Clint Eastwood as the Beaver. Uh, you wanted to see me, Dad? Yes, Beaver? Sit down. I am, Dad. Keep in mind, I'm six foot four. <laughs> so, uh, what's the problem, Dad? Beaver, I have never been more disappointed in you than I was today when you walked in the principal's office wearing that horrible sweatshirt. Oh, you mean my Beastie Boys sweatshirt? Right. <laughs> and I just can't understand it. Just this morning, your mother and I both told you to take that sweatshirt off before you went to school. Now, why did you deliberately disobey us? Come on, Dad. It's the biggest concert of the year. Run DMC and the Beasties, and I already got my tickets. Oh, no, Beaver. Oh, yeah, Dad. All right, you can go. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'll try to bring you home a DMC T-shirt. 1227 at WID. Welcome to our little party, ma'am, whoever you are. It's so nice to have you with us and see how agreeable we are sometimes, unless somebody calls up and acts like a psychotic bitch. By the way, the Dr. Susan Block Show, I want to mention this again. I don't know who left this, but I'm pretty excited. Can we look into this, George? Can we take our show on the road? It says, uh, makes Dr. Susan Block makes love to Orlando on WQBQ Radio. Can we at least get some tapes of that, some audio effects, something? And she's doing her uh, series of four safe sex shows with Orlando, I believe, or in Orlando. Well, that's bad. On the subjects of masturbation, phone sex, making out, and heavy petting, and condoms. Not necessarily in that order. Okay, 1228, let's go to Hollywood on the Star Line. Hi, how you doing, Neil? I'm doing it, man. want to wish you a heartfelt, happy Purim to you and your yeah. part. Yeah. I think you were talking, that rep you were talking about, I think it might be Jerry Penicoli. The what? The, the Jerry lab. Penicoli and they the gerbil, be, yeah. It could be him, but right. anyway, I think it's a disgrace that they're... Uh... It was kind of embarrassing when a gerbil would, like, run out on the field and get lost, and they'd, like, delay the game for hours at a time. <laughs> anyway, I think it's terrible that they removed that, uh, the instant replay. It stinks. I mark my like... words, sir. Mark of... bright my words. They're going to be real sorry real fast. Like, in the first call... week of the season next year, they're going to be real sorry. You're absolutely right. A lot of bad calls last year. Yeah. So, anyway, even, even with the replay, there were a lot of bad calls. Can you imagine now it's going to be a nightmare? Terrible. Anyway, I want to suck around. I'm a first-time listener, first-time caller, and no, I'm you're not. young Neil. No, you're not. I yeah, know. have a nice life. Boy, who are you kidding? 12... <laughs> what a sense of humor he's got. 1229 at WIOD. Let's go home now because I got my check and we had a good lunch and the calls have been not too bad. And we had uh, Mr. Microphone and we had that uh, first-time young lady. And not too bad today, huh, for a Thursday in a crappy town. Star Lines open, Star IOD, Fort Lauderdale. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you, sir. 
I saw the neatest bumper sticker, Neil. That said? You seen, uh, you know, the insignia for the Japanese, the orange sun? With yeah. The white background? Yes, sir. That just say no across it. I love it. Just anyway, say no? Just, uh, what was it, like on a Toyota or something? No, it was on an American car. Oh, okay. Anyway. Probably... Sorry, Pat. Pat Murray had a great sense of humor, folks. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> oh, by the way, there was a thing. Uh, Pat Buchanan had a uh, one of his stupid press conferences yesterday, and uh, his wife was up there on the podium, and they said, are you going to get rid of the uh, the uh, Mercedes? And she got up there. She said, it's for sale. Anybody want to make an offer? Ha, 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 not. You know? Really? Anyway. They said if you scrape the swastika off the windshield, like, maybe they'll consider it. <laughs> Fascist pigs. Uh. No doubt about it. Anyway, the reason I called, I think that the uh, instant replay, I think they should give each coach two or three chances to use it at their own discretion. Right. End of story. Look how much revenue they're at, the advertising and everything they're going to lose. Mm-hmm. No doubt. It's short the game. Once they find that out, man. No doubt. Although I was reading a thing in the satellite TV week yesterday that um, the NFL, because they made such a greedy, disgusting deal with the owners that they're like... Um, Extending it, and it's like almost they're giving it to the networks for nothing for a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? Were they talking about pay per view now? Or Never going to happen. Forget night? it. Never going to happen. I didn't think. Never will fly. Believe me, that'd no be way. the death knell of the game if they try that crap. That's fact. With about 80% of those games that are on Monday night, uh, they couldn't pay us to watch them. Anyway, uh, if you can give me a little chill on my bones, I'm homesick. Let's hear some Dick Purton or some CKLW or something. <laughs> Boy, I think I'm having a relapse. <laughs> well, what the hell ever happened to Dick Purton, by the way? Kathy Payne and the ass Livingston called the other day and said that when Dick was down on the West Coast uh, a couple of weeks ago, he was trying to call on the 800 number and, of course, couldn't get through, which I find hard to believe because <laughs> anybody can get through on our 800 line. But uh, he's back up in detail. Detroit, making a lot of bucks. Okay, sir. Have a good day. Andrews, have a tough fun with WKNRZ for Johnny. There you go. Oh, whatever happened to my CKLW jingles? Oh. You remember CKLW, sir? You're losing it. What? Oh, yeah. I, believe me, I do. Oh, I don't like that. Bud Davies likes it. It's nice and slow. CKLW. There it is. Golden. Yeah, okay, now we're doing it. Right on the Edsel Ford Expressway, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Have a great day. Ciao. Bye-bye. See you at uh, Lou's Finer Deli. Not. See you at Skipper's Table. Boy, that used to be great. There was a uh, deli, not, not a deli, a smorgasbord place. There were two of them, one in Plymouth and the other one on, um, I think, Seven Mile Road in Detroit. They were called Skipper's Table Smorgasbord. And most smorgasbord places are like for old people. I don't want to mention any down here that are like mostly out of business where they go in and they put their teeth in a glass and it fizzes while they eat. And the spaghetti tastes like the corn and the mashed potatoes taste like the meatloaf. And, you know, it's a, no, this was great. Skipper's Table. And you could go back like a hundred times. And I had a friend, a uh, salesman, as a matter of fact. Oh, I shouldn't say that. A radio salesperson from Albion, Michigan. And before we'd go to the track at Hazel Park or Wolverine at night, we'd go over to Skipper's Table and eat about 400 pounds worth of food for like three ninety nine. That was the best. Skipper's Table, man. They don't make them like that anymore. Plantation. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, Malalukas aren't in bloom now. Oh. And if the thing you got gets into your chest, you're going to think you have bronchitis and pneumonia wrapped up into one. What does that mean? It means that you'll be coughing your brains out. What do you mean the thing I got? I got a head cold. Well, don't let it drop down. Don't let it? How about my cold? That, that too. Oh. No, it's like almost gone. All right. I think. All right. You're trying to talk me back into it, aren't you? Yeah. Misery loves company. Why not? Okay. <laughs> I'll work on it. Uh, See you. You're so godfather intensive today. Yes. The only thing I've seen that's bigger than U.S. Steel... It's the day I walked up behind Hank Goldberg at the track. <laughs> Take it easy. Okay. Smart ass, man, I'll tell you. Um, which one have I got out? I don't even know which one of these I got out. I'm so damn Godfather intensive, I got them all out. Ooh. Number two, number two. I tell you, when you're having a stressful, traumatic, awful day, there's just something so soothing about this music, you know? I don't know about you, but it sure does it for me. It just kind of calms me down. It's like somebody is making me a musical offer that I can't refuse. Let's do uh, Miami. Hello. Miami. Buenas tardes. Hasta luego. Hasta la vista. Hasta your ass. Let's do uh, Leisure City. Hey, how you doing, Neil? I'm doing it. Uh, that's good. Hey, uh, first off, I want to uh, clarify you on that uh, replay. Oh, I love it. Go ahead. Uh, not only did the douchebag Jets 
vote the against The Giants it. also vote against it. Not only them, but also the counterfeit bills. All the New York State teams voted against it. Well, what the hell do they know? Well, let's see. Did the Jets Sounds the like they're trying to pull a fast one. Yeah, the Giants also, because the Giants and the Jets were like back-to-back on the list, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, triple play there. Yeah, screw them. Uh, did you Have you seen any of this uh, baby lollipop trial? Baby lollipops? First of all, the name of the trial just, I mean, what the media does here, I just, I have a headache from thinking about it. Yeah, well, have you, <laughs> have you seen that uh, girl who's testifying for the state, Olivia? Well, a girl, I guess, whatever, Olivia Gonzalez? Yeah. Yeah. You seen the sideburns on her, man? She oh, looks yeah. like Elvis. No, she looks like uh, Luke Perry on uh, Beverly Hills 902016438. Are those babies real, or is that uh, Charles Alfieri uh, sideburn? Images? Right. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, I mean, it's, I don't know. Did you tell her to butch up? Only her proctologist knows for sure, sir. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask you about this Buchanan thing. Who? You know, uh, not Buck Buchanan. Uh, Buchanan, the guy who was trying to run president. He can't be Heinrich. Pre- yeah, Heimrich. Heimrich mm-hmm. Buchanan. He can't be president, really, can he? I mean, didn't they pass a law after uh, after Roosevelt was president, Fred, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, that no more presidents with the same last name? Yeah. They had Teddy, and then, and we already had a president named Buchanan. Right. So they can't. It's can't. too bad because the Cubs were hoping to get Steve Wilson elected president before they traded him to the Dodgers, and they just missed out. They just totally Good way to get rid of him, though. Yeah. Well, listen, have a great day. In fact, uh, it would be a good way to get rid of Danny Jackson, too, but I guess uh, we got beat on that baby, too. Have a great life, sir. Uh, look at that. Two open lines in day. That's a first in hours on this show. Does that mean we're, like, coming screeching to a halt in the middle of lunch hour? We hope not. God, they just know how to stick it to you when you least expect to rate it. 524, no, what is it? I don't even know what the number is. 751, I think it's setting into my lungs deep, George. Well, here I am again, your Century Village man, Chuck Zink. Here I am again. This is Rick from Carpet and Tile Expo. Stainmaster protects against most common food and beverage stains. Stainmaster is certified and warranted by DuPont. Twelve forty at WIOD. We got a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Okay. The longer I wait on this, the more I get mad at your cheapskate management for not getting Cellular One Starline. Sir, what can I say? What happened? What you hear is what you get. What you see is what you get. (laughs) Cheap, Irish. They're thrifty, sir. They're like the Scottish. They're thrifty. (laughs) Like the frogs. Hey, just one note on that replay, which sucks. I can't believe they did that. Yes. Um... All I got to say is the first one that voted against it coach-wise that complains on a call has got nothing to say. Exactly. In fact, I think they ought to call it against him just out of spite. I mean, like a real obvious one, just but to piss him off. Smart. You know, all they want is money, money, money. What they ought to do is have advertisers sponsor like a, a, a replay minute, you know, like to buy Budweiser or something. You know? Right. There you go. Bucks. They can anyway, have like I'm another uh, Bud Bowl in, in between like 4,500 times a game. That's right. Okay, I just want to throw that in. Okay, have a great life and happy Purim to you. (laughs) Bye-bye. 1241, we have an open line at Broward, 524. There's something I just have to hear one more time today. i got to hear it. I have to confess because it's not even like from this show, but it's got to be in the top five and bubbling right now. So who would you vote for? I was on the other guy's ballot. What other guy? The Republican guy. Oh, no, man. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Ted. I didn't want to break that. Which one did you vote for, I'm not going to get into it, Ted. You'll freak out on me, okay? Not... No way. Yeah. That uh, that hooded freak. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Be specific. What's his name, man? I'm not going to argue, the Paul. Guy, the guy from CNN? Ted Turner, yes. Oh, man. Yeah. You voted for Buchanan? I voted for Ted Turner. Dude, why yeah. don't you just send the police right into my pad? I knew. Why don't you just give them my Ted. phone number and address? Ted. And let them come over. <laughs> Ted. And kill me. <laughs> Man, you ele- you're going to elect the thought police. Ted, Ted, this wasn't a presidential election. This is a primary, okay? I didn't have a chance to vote for the other side. Give me the chance to vote for the other side. Rick, the what? My pal, Rick, voted for a I Nazi. Knew, I knew this would be... I didn't vote for a Nazi! <laughs> 1242 at WIOD. I rest my case. Here's a mobile in Stewart. Neil. Yeah. First time caller. Well, how about that, eh? <laughs> Come on. What? How I know who been? this is. Huh? I know who this is. I know. It's, well, it's been a while. I just Where were you call. last night up at Pompano Park when we needed your money? I was at No Show. I had to work last night. Yeah, I bet. I- I'm sorry. You were working it out. I'm afraid to go see you. Since you went on that tirade on me the day after I saw you last time, you know, I'm 
I'm kind of fearful of coming up and saying hello. You know, you are an <laughs> asshole. Has anybody ever told you that lately? No, just... I didn't go on a tirade. All I said was, how come it was that you and your very lovely girlfriend come over to the table after having your own very nice table not too far away the entire evening and seemingly perfectly happy there and actually cashing a few tickets through luck and come over and, like, squat halfway down into the chairs at my table and say, oh, is it okay if we sit down as your ass is hitting the seat? <laughs> What was wrong with the other chairs? Were they, like, on fire? She wanted to meet you. Well, that's fine. That's fine. And, you know, she wanted to After an evening little... with you, it's no, she probably wanted to meet anybody, I would imagine. <laughs> God. What night is the uh, the fans' horse racing this week? Friday, Friday or night? Friday night. Friday night. Don't ask me anything about that. I don't want to discuss it ever again. I mean, I'll be there. It's, uh, what can I say? Well, we might get a good price. Yeah, right. You'll have a big price, all right. Yeah, even Bob Barker will be there. The price will be right. I'm just, I am so overwhelmed. And I noticed that Porcupine is conspicuous by his fat absence here today with that stupid rule about $2 across the board. See, the, you want me to tell ridiculous. you, do you want me to tell you the real story? Yeah. See, this summer for the summer meet, uh -huh. you know, like most of the guys are leaving. Like Pavey goes to the Meadowlands and Wally goes back up where he goes, A, and uh, Kevin and Peter go back in Mount Donnie Harbor to Detroit. I was going to ask you who our drivers are going to be, by the way. Well, I think Hogan is sticking around and Donnie Brainerd will be like top dog, you know. And, uh, but anyway, Bruce Ranger is like right on the verge, you know, like one day he's going to stay, the next day he's not. So they really just suck it up to Brucey to stick around because he's a real good driver. And he's got, you know, he's a well, good horseman. And Well, he's okay. Yeah. And uh, so this thing last night, I think they must have, uh, I just can't believe it, you know. I mean, just like, Bruce, hey, we love you and you won. He didn't win nothing, okay? Kevin is like God, and he wins that 10th race like a champion. And all. And that you should have seen the photo for third, I'm telling you. If Gary Lewis wouldn't have dropped his, uh, his slip on the uh, track just before, I'm serious. He reached down to get it if he would have hit the horse one more time. Come on, Gary. Wango your tango, baby. Get your ass up there. And hey, Brucey talking, hangs uh, on for third by, like, the slimmest of noses. And then, uh, you know, winds up with a stupid deal now. That porcupine came up with $2 across the board. What has that got to do with driving it has skill? nothing to do with anything. No. Ridiculous. Let's have a race off. Let's do this right and stop sticking it to Kevin for crying out loud. What the hell did he ever do to us besides cash me a lot of tickets? That's Damn it. True. I feel I got a dolphin question for you. I think they're prejudiced against our Michigan drivers at Pompano Park, and I'm going to take some serious damn action about it like Friday night. I am. I'm going to go out there and blow away all the other horses and let Kevin and Peter and Donnie win by ten lengths every race just out of spite. I'll be there Friday. And I'm going to get that Kelly Shepard, too, for parking my horse 27 seconds the first quarter last night and then finishing oh. eighth. Oh, 27 seconds, first quarter. Kelly Shepard, man, I, I don't, don't even get me started, oh. okay, about good old Kelly the Schlepp. Oh. And he wonders why about half of those guys out there on the track would like to stick his ass in the infield lake. Well, Joe likes to do that, too. Joe likes to park him out and gun him in the first quarter. Joe is whipping him before they start. Before the <laughs> gate opens, Joe is whipping and slashing. <laughs> Joe had a horse last night, Coquie, in the 12th race, 2-5, to five, okay, 2-5. to five. At the top of the stretch, this horse stopped like he ran into a Mack truck, okay? <laughs> Like he ran into a brick wall. The Great Wall of China, I call it. Exactly. That was Jolton Joe with Coquie. <laughs> I got your Coquie right over here. If they only ran three quarters of a mile, Joe would win all the races. Yeah. He's whipping it, I'm telling you. Once Joe is through with a man, they don't walk for a he month. Lo he loves to whip it, and the horses, too. Yeah. But <laughs> That's what Dominic said. Uh, Neil, well, you cut the crap out of blue. I'm watching the phone. We've had a great day, and the phones are dropping off here like flies. All right, wait. I this is like Rick Riley talking about snow skiing, okay? <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> and Pat Buchanan. Yeah, pack this. Uh, Neil, I, I just reordered my Dolphin season tickets. Yeah. And they sent me a notice saying that they're going to put aside a day for season ticket holders to come out and upgrade their seats. Where you could actually go to the stadium and pick your seats if they're, they're available? Yeah. Have you been to that in the past? Is it worth going down there for? No, more? I don't pick my seat. My nose a little bit, but not my seat. <laughs> Have a great day, Frank. Hey, Neil. Yeah. In honor of instant replay being killed? Yep. Can you play uh, Referee by Tom Petty? Bye, Joel. See ya. 1247, he is such a pain in the ass. Uh, we have an open line in day at 7. we got three open lines now. We've been killing killing them all day long. And he comes on here and starts a whole damn thing about Pompano Park, which I love, but the audience, 98% of them, couldn't give one crap about. And, like, uh, the whole show is dead now. Thanks a lot, Joel. Wait till you sit down at the table next time. we got a little surprise for you. we got, like, an uh, electric seat. Sally supplying the juice. All you orifice managers, I got a headache from his call, I really do. All you orifice managers out there, does your orifice use bottled water? 
like ours used to here at W-I-O-N-D? Well, if you do, you're probably wasting space and time by stirring and schlepping those big, bulky, heavy, hernia-inducing bottles. And probably your bills are tough to decipher and they fluctuate or flatulate from month to month. Hi, this is Paul Songus. Oh, it's 12.51. And that's uh, for the one to two hour, and I punched it up. Bad mistake. Anyways, they say in my backyard to my dogs in the morning in plantation, don't void where prohibited. Anyway, the Marlin Ticket Contest giveaway here on this important radio show. Nothing to buy, nothing uh, exciting to do. Just get out a postcard, one entry per person, and send you a postcard with your name, address, and uh, phone number, shoe size, jockstrap size. Mail it to Marlin's Tickets, WIOD, Miami, 33141. One, postcards can be, must be postmarked by Wednesday, April 1, or you can drop it off our 610 WYOD studios before 5 p.m. any day. Um, on April 3rd is the deadline, okay? This is so confusing, I just want to die. Anyway, the winner will be drawn on this show uh, Monday, April 6th, and the winner's going to get a pair of season tickets for the 1993 Florida Marlins season. How do you like that? Open to all persons except employees and their immediate families of Cox Enterprises, the Sisters, and the Florida Marlins organization. All entries become the property of 610 WYOD, acceptance of the prize, etc. Okay? Okay. 1252 at WYOD. Just get those cards in the mail. One per person, please. But, like, if you've got a family of eight, they can each send the cards, so don't feel too bad, okay? Plantation again? Hello? Hello? Yes. Oh. How did he know I was from Plantation? I never told him that. Well, he assumed so. I'm mobile right now. I was in Plantation when I called. I'm now in North Dade. Wow. On my own dime. What I a bet. step in the wrong ira- direction. Anyways, yeah. um, first, this Bob Stoper thing, mm-hmm. it's real simple. Why doesn't he do, like Sally did, and just suck up to Ed Anson, so to speak, and he'll have no problem? I don't think Susan would be too happy about that. Well, you know, it worked for Sally. I mean, look how many years she's been there. Right. Second, Hank Goldberg. Do you ever listen to Hank? I don't think Bob's got the right connection, so to speak. Uh, Do I ever listen to Hank? Yes. And if I'm in the car at night, I always listen to Hank, okay. yes. He's are you going to att- you going to attack fat, uh, Hank? Uh, well, not really. I, all I asked you is if you're going to, I wasn't like threatening you or something. Okay. I'm just, I mean, I want you to keep in mind that Hank's been under the weather. He's got like a heart problem. I'm he's under been, the weather. He's you're been under in. The weather. I am too. Nobody uh, cares we're about under that. The weather. He's no been in and out of the crap. hospital. He's got like a breathing problem, and I mean, he's like uh, overweight. He's not pounds, just Hank Goldberg. Right he's a hippopotamus. Go ahead. Well, tell him to lose hundred pounds. Like he's did. got to. I he's got to cut the crap. Well, that's that's part of my thing. I mean, whenever you listen to him, he's always talking about the Raider cheerleader and these fabulous babes, that facade, that place he advertises. I mean, who the hell is he kidding? He couldn't get one of those chicks unless he paid for it. So what's wrong with that? What are they going to do with a fat What's wrong with that? So what's wrong with that? He's got the big bucks. Why do you think he works like 80 hours a day? He's got serious bucks. That's probably why his heart's ready to stop. He's, uh, I'll guarantee you. I know, but he's acting like all these babes are all over him. Give me a break. They are, and that's because they work by the hour. What's wrong with that? I think you're just jealous, sir. Go out and get a boyfriend. 12.54 12.54 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward. <coughs> Boy, I'm telling you, i got the good stuff coming up now. That signals the end of this crud. When the really good stuff starts coming out from the bowels of your mucus glands. God. You're not going to believe this, okay? Nobody, and you won't care about it, but it's just ironic. Either I'm getting psychic or just I'm uh, losing it. I'm watching my CBS morning show this morning, CBS uh, Today or whatever the show is. And... Um, I'm I'm sitting there, th- I know it's strange, but I'm thinking about the mucus because I'm like almost over this cold. And I just, for some reason, I'm thinking about, you know, that we used to talk on here about the really dark green is like it's been in the body the longest and then the yellow, which is kind of gross. But that's the rumor, you know, that's the popular folklore that the darker the mucus, the longer it's been in the body. And wouldn't you know, just as I'm thinking about this, they come out with a story about um, not asthma. What's the thing they've got this new uh, DNA ace, this new uh, stuff to break up the mucus where people cough and choke? And uh, we had it on our news all morning. Some kind of like uh, bronchial disorder. And they're starting to talk about mucus. And my mind was on mucus, which is really uh, not something I think about too much. Here's uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hi, Neil. Hi. How you doing? Okay. You're not, your mind's not on mucus, is it? No, not That's at good. all. Excellent. I want to wish you a happy Purim. Mm-hmm. That's an organization we're starting called MOM, M-O-M, M-O-M Minds on Mucus. 
Happy Purim to you, too. Happy Homentoshin. Thank you. Now, can I ask you a question? Yes. Do you eat Homentoshin? Yes. Do you like the uh, real ones like I like with the poppy seeds on the outside that are big and fluffy and soft? Or do you like those little hard triangular ones that are supposed to be uh, for real? I like the ones, the real ones. The soft ones. The soft ones. Right. I only like certain things that are hard, not Homentoshin. Right. There you go. I want to talk to you about one of your sponsors, Spicers. Yeah. Did you ever try them? Yes. You like them? Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of them at home. What flavor? Chocolate I love the best. Yeah, I just tried the chocolate. I have to tell you this, Neil, they really suck. You don't like them? No. I the like barbecued them. barbecued ones suck the big weenie. Yeah, what about the other ones? I didn't try the other ones. Oh. These are terrible. What do you like with one of those uh, phony fake diet plans or something? No, you got to eat Miracle Berries first. Oh, yeah, that can't hurt. Well, call uh, call the plant doctor. That'll work, right? Okay. Have a good day, Neil. Uh, in fact, maybe you can plant some in your homentosh. Excuse me? I said have a great Purim. You too. Bye. <laughs> She's with one of those, like, Jenny Craig or something. 1257 at WIOD. We have an open line in Broward, 524. Out of town has quieted down considerably, and quite frankly, I couldn't give a flying crap less, to be honest with you. Here's uh, Cutler Ridge. Hey, good afternoon, Neil. And how you doing, sir? I'm doing lousy. You say misery love co loves company. I'm sick as a dog. Oh, it's going around, man. It's the crud. It's I creeping. Up, I woke up with it yesterday. <laughs> Yep. So how long do I have? i got to look at the mucus? Yeah, when it starts, when a real heavy duty, like dark green... Oh, no, uh, this is real clear. Oh, no, that's just the beginning. Oh, man. How long you had it? Uh, let's see. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Just about a week. That's why it takes about a week to get rid wow. of a cold, and that's just about at the end, at the right. tail end. Well, well, at least I'm home here taking care of myself. Yeah, and you got um, a good weekend to get destroyed. It's always good getting a cold before the weekend. You get your whole weekend ruined. Oh, geez, thanks. Uh, listen, I'm not going to be one of these people jumping on the old bandwagon uh, about the uh, instant replay thing. I'm glad it's out of there. I'm well, there we go. Finally, a guy, even though he's full of crap, who's got the care. guts to I say it. Care. That's I'm right. Good for you. Of it. Good it's, for it's you. About every time, every time, every cru every call is a crucial call. I mean, how can they say just call? No, well, every call is not a crucial sure call. That's not. No, it's not. Neil, if you get, can I, can I, can I, wait a minute. Quit. Wait a minute. Can I explain something to yeah. you? In baseball. Balls and strikes, you know, and stuff that goes on, okay? Um, every pitch, there's another call. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. The, every ball that's hit, the umpire has to make a call. Sure. In football, the even though there are a lot of calls to be made, let's face it, most plays in football, A, there's not a penalty, and B, there's not a controversy about whether it's complete or incomplete or a right. fumble or not. Right. So as compared to baseball but, where there are like hundreds and hundreds of pitches, Football is a piece of cake. There aren't that many. Yeah, but you know, when, when you when you you know stop a play for this or this, you stop the momentum of the drive. And how many teams, especially Buffalo, they in Cincinnati when they first yeah, started. but but the reason advantage. for that is they didn't do it right. They were supposed to allow only so many seconds. And there were some of those deals that went on for like a half an hour. Well, I'm kidding, I'm getting sick and tired of it. you know how fat I got going back to the fridge every time. So why can't they just tighten it up a little bit? Well, every time you make a rule in sports, you got to have rules to govern that rule. Right. And and they're not doing it. And uh, I'm what did they do back in the old? days. They paid the refs off. So, you know, keep doing it here. What's the difference? <laughs> oh, when it starts getting like like purple, that's the time to call us again. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks, Feel man. better. Okay, well, he's under the weather that, you know, answers his problem. Not everybody's going to agree on this. We like one or two uh, people who happen to be wrong. 751-WYOD. We have an open line of Dade. We got uh, Lisa Campbell, I'll bet. Lisa here? Okay, Lisa's, she's Miss Dependable in there, okay? She may not get it right, but at least she's in there. Lisa's got the uh, 1 o'clock news. We got Rick and Suds today with, uh, what's her name is back again? Laura Korn with her cornball crab. 237 intimate questions every woman should ask a man. Like, can that be felt? And news from around the planet. And Sonny and Joe on Sports Talk at 6.05. And speaking of can that be felt, Dade County State Attorney Janet Reno with good old Hank, 8 to 11. That's awful low, man. Tonight. This is South Florida's news traffic. And weather station news talk radio 610 WIOD Miami Fort Lauderdale and the Palm Beaches. Good afternoon. I'm Lisa Campbell in the 610 WIOD News Center. The temperature at 1 o'clock, 85 degrees. From the 610 WIOD Weather Center, meteorologist Bob Soper. News talk radio 610 WIOD. Yeah. News 
Talk Radio, 610 WIOD presents the Neil Rogers Show. To get in touch and talk with Neil, dial 751-WIOD from day. Yeah. In Broward, it's 524-WIOD. Outside the 305 area code, toll free, 1-800-944-WIOD. Yeah. And Bell South Mobility customers make a free call by dialing star IOD. The opinions expressed by the guests, hosts, or callers are not necessarily those of this station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio, 610. W-I-O-D. Hi, this is Paul Songus, and even I listen to the Neil Rogers 1 to 2 hour. <laughs> and now, back to Chicken Jeopardy and your host, Alex Trevick. We move on now to Double Jeopardy. Henny, you had the low score at the end of the last round. Choose a category, please. <laughs> Extra terrestrials for 200. It makes strange noises in the chicken coop late at night. Yes, boneless. <laughs> Frank Perdue, no. Cajun. <laughs> No, what is a poultry geist? A poultry geist. Henny, you still have control of the board. <laughs> to beak or not to beak for 600. He was the star of the omen. Boneless. <laughs> Correct, Gregory Peck. We'll return with finally Chicken Jeopardy, where our category will be choking the pecker. Right after this. 106 at WIOD. It's our mammoth one to two hour. Songus is going to have lots of time to listen to all of four and a half hours from now on. He just wants to be a good guy now and get out of the way. Don't bother nobody. Out of town lines open, 1-800-944. We'd like to be your president. Here's a lady in Miami on the star line. Not anymore. What? I'm in Broward now. Wow, are you making progress or no, what? No, you're just a little slow. Yeah, but we're paying for it. That's true. That's, That's all that counts. That's true. I'm That's sitting, why you're still there. I'm sitting here drawing all over my banana. Really? Yes. Well, me too. Well, fun, isn't it? It sure is. Listen, I have a question for you. Yeah. Have things kind of quieted down about your new move? Are they leaving you alone? About my new what? Move. Move. Relocation. I